Peter, we're rolling. Okay. So guys, I want to talk about Christian spirituality. I want to talk about what it means and what it looks like to be a Christian. And the reason why I want to do it is because we're in Lent. And in Lent, this is always a time when Christians refocus on the words of Jesus, on the teachings of Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way that we go towards holiness. He is the way that we discover what it means to be godlike. So I want to look at Matthew chapter 7, verses, um, verses, let's just have a look, 1 to 15. And I'm going to read it and give commentary on his statements. And after each individual point, I'm going to invite a question for anyone that might want to ask a question. So, chapter 7 of Matthew, verse 1. Do not judge so that you will not be judged, for in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck from your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Christian spirituality works from the inside out. Christians are called to change themselves from the inside. When you have learned to navigate the, your own inner topography and to transform your own inner landscape, then you will be in a position to teach someone else how to be better. But many Christians are quick to judge their brothers and sisters based on how far off the mark that they are. And we judge harshly. But Christ counsels us by the measure, the standard that you measure, you will be judged by that measure. So if you want to be judged gracefully, judge others gracefully. Now lots of Christians mishear that. They think that this means having no standards, not wanting to uphold any attitude or any belief, and just being blasé. Nothing could be further from the truth. As Christians, we can still uphold high standards as Christians. But when we find people, brothers and sisters in the faith, that are off those standards, the way that we should address it is with grace, encouraging our brother or sister to grow. And this is something that we see lacking in the liberal progressive world. They have no grace. Their virtue system and their cancel culture has no sense of forgiveness. It is full of judgment and is full of judgment about the outward social crimes. Christianity is better than liberal progressive society. Amen. Change yourself first, learn what it means to change your inner man, then you're in a position to counsel your brother and sister. And when you stand before the judgment seat of God, remember, by the gracelessness that you judge your brother and sister, you will also be judged with equally less grace. Judge with grace and you will be judged with grace. And that's a message for you progressives, you virtue signaling hypocrites who promote a council cul a council culture that is built upon hatred for people because they may have said the wrong thing or believe the wrong thing. Have grace to let people change. Any questions on that before I move on to my next point? Any questions? Going once, going twice, going Three times. Okay. Go on. How do we bring back fellowship back in the church? Fellowship. Okay, on that question, bro. The way that this is related to fellowship is that in your fellowships, when you see a brother or sister who is fallen short of the standards that are expected of a Christian, 
the way that you address that is through encouragement, not condemnation. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Truth is like a fire in the center of a field. It gives out light and heat. Those who are close to the fire are more warmed by the fire and are more lit up by the fire. And their shadow strikes a clearer contrast with the light. But there are other people on the same field. Use this field as our example. If the fire is in the middle yeah. and we're stood in the middle, yeah. those are the saints of the church. Right. But the brother and sister who's just hopped over the fence, who's just converted and he's maybe shacked up with their boyfriend or girlfriend because when they weren't a Christian, they were living like a married couple, they're here, they're in the field, but they're far away from the fire. And we need to encourage them to move closer to the fire, not condemn them because they are so far away from the fire. And that's how you apply this to fellowship. Okay, next point. Jesus said, do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Christ is saying here that we should not take the precious truths of the faith and throw them before the mockers and throw them before those who would trample over them. And that means that those revelations, those times that God has spoken to your heart in a personal revelation to you, don't throw it as evidence before those that will trample over it because that is only evidence to you and is not evidence to anyone else. Furthermore, when we do it here in Speaker's Corner, we know that we are speaking truth to those who hate the truth. But we also know there are many honest people who are listening to what we're saying. Right. And we are throwing pearls to those people, right. not to the swine in the park that would tear them down. Right. We have to push through the swine to reach the sincere. Yes. So Christians, when God has spoke to you, don't throw it to the scoffers. Share it with those that will value what you have heard. Any questions on this before I move on to my next point? Any questions going once? Any questions going Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. If you engage him, he'll just carry on. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or what man is there among you who when his son asks for a loaf, will he will give him a stone or give him a snake? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Jesus is saying, ask knock seek that means he is teaching us to work from hope to operate from hope Amen. if you believe that by asking you will receive by knocking the opportunity will open and by um ask knock seek by seeking you will find you are operating from hope it is the idea that your actions will make a difference. And that is how we as Christians are to operate, with faith, asking God for our needs, trusting in our Heavenly Father 
and then pushing forward for the things that we pray for that are in accordance with his will. Do you want to see a new Christendom? Yes. Then act like it. Do you want to see a revived church? Yes. Then act like it. Do you want to see Christianity grow in Saudi Arabia? Yes. Then act like it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are called to act with faith and to act from hope. This is what Christ teaches us, to trust our Father and to act. Ignatius of Loyola said this way, pray like everything depends on you, sorry, God. Pray like everything depends on God, act like everything depends on you. Any questions on this point before any, I move on to my next point? On the point? Yes, yes. Go on. Just a question, not a debate. A question. You said you want to see Islam in Saudi Arabia. And yeah, Christianity in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Do you hate Islam? Yes. Amen. So why would they allow you there? Okay. If you hate you've asked your, you've asked your question. I've answered your question. He asked me, do I hate Islam? Do I hate the ideas, the beliefs, the values of this religion that has persecuted the church for 1,400 years? Yes, I do. Just like Jews hate Nazism. And you wouldn't criticize a Jew for hating Nazism. So why would you criticize a Christian for hating Islam? But does that mean I also hate Muslims? No. no. I don't. I don't hate Muslims. I take Muslims as I find them. Some Muslims are good. Some Muslims are bad. And some Muslims are somewhere in the middle. And the bad Muslims, we have to stop. They're the ones pushing Islam. The good Muslims are the ones ignoring Islam. And the ones in the middle are sometimes a fudge. They push Islam sometimes and they ignore Islam other times. Now, let me, uh, let me move on. Jesus says, Jesus says, in everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. Jesus is giving us an interpretive key by which we can understand all of the Old Testament law. All of the Old Testament law goes in this direction. Why don't you steal? Because you don't want people to steal from you. Why don't you libel and lie? Because you don't want people to libel and lie about you. Why do you honor your mother and father? Because you want other people to honor your mother and father. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the interpretive key of the law of the Old Testament. So those that keep this commandment keep the entirety of the Old Testament law. Christ has simply given us the key by which to be faithful to the Old Covenant in the New Covenant. And this law is superior to anything you find in Sharia law. It's superior to anything you find in secular law. It's superior to anything you find taught by Hidutva. It's superior to the Talmud. Definitely. This is the way that people should guide their actions. What good do you want for yourself? Then aspire that your neighbor should also have that good. You don't want your house to be broken into, then you ensure your neighbor's house is not broken into. This is the way. You don't want to be persecuted for your faith? Then don't allow your brothers and sisters to be persecuted for their faith. Never. 
Brothers and sisters, by contrast, Sharia law would reduce Christians to second-class citizens. Where Muslims, quite literally, would treat us in a very different way to how they would want to be treated. Any questions on this before I move on? Any questions going once? Any questions going twice? Any questions going three times? Any questions going three times? Okay. The next point that Jesus said. Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who, who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there is few that find it. This is a rebuke of those who teach that anyone can find salvation, that everyone will find salvation. Universalists who teach that everyone will be saved are directly contradicting Jesus Christ. And those who teach religious pluralism that there are many paths to God or contradicting Jesus. Jesus states that for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and there are few that find it. Jesus Christ is that gate. He is that way. And to find salvation, you must find Jesus Christ. There is a real judgment at the end of this life, we will all stand before our Creator and we will all give an account of our lives. Believer and unbeliever will answer for their works. But if you present your works to God without Jesus Christ, they will be filthy rags and they will count for nothing. It is Jesus Christ himself who makes your works to effect. It is Jesus Christ himself that saves you and your works that receive the reward because now you have accepted Jesus Christ. Your works can count for something. Without Jesus, they can't. So, I encourage you, to find the narrow gate. Don't go with the crowd. Don't go along with the sheeple who go along with what our society says just to fit in. Have the courage to swim in the other direction of the stream of our society. Because broad is the way that leads to damnation. Those, the liberal progressives, are taking you on a one-way head path to hell when they tell you that all religions are the same. Any questions before I close? Any questions on the narrow way? Going once, going twice, going three times. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Test vote. Test vote. Test vote. We don't need Islam. What we need is Jesus in the West. A muscular Christianity. And that's the wrap. God bless you in the name of Jesus.